Hello and welcome to this channel. Dixit stultus in corde suo, non est Deus. If you are a Christian, you are probably quite familiar with this verse. Nowadays it is very popular to use it against atheists, implying somehow that it is they, those who deny the existence of God, who are the fools in question. And if you quote only this first half of the first verse from Psalm 14, it may even seem justified. Unfortunately, there are some Bible verses that, once taken out of context, seem to get a new life of their own. This particular verse is just one of many. They become slogans and are brandished without much thought. They remind me of severed, zombified limbs that continue to crawl once they were separated from the body. And it's a shame. This verse has an important message for us Christians. And it has nothing to do with atheism or atheists. The message has to do with us but we miss it because we have separated the verse from its context. This misrepresentation is not the first one suffered by Psalm 14 verse 1, or Psalm 13 as you will find it in the Latin Vulgate. There was a time in the history of the church when the fool, who says that there is no God, was taken to refer to the Jews who denied the divinity of Christ. Fortunately this interpretation died some time ago and you may not even have heard of it. I think it's time to lay this fool equals atheist interpretation right next to the other one six feet under. So what is David talking about? Who is the fool who says in his heart, non est Deus? We have the Apostle Paul to help us, but before we turn to Romans chapter 3, let's read some of Psalm 14 to get an idea of what we are dealing with. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt, they do abominable deeds, there is none that does good. The Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of man to see if there is any that act wisely that seek God. They have all gone astray, they are all alike corrupt. There is none that does good, no, not one. Have they no knowledge, all the evildoers who eat up my people as they eat bread, and do not call upon the Lord? In Romans, Paul quotes a couple of lines from Psalm 14 to make a point about the Jews and Gentiles being equally corrupt and sinful. This is what he has to say in Romans 3, verses 9 to 12. What then? Are we Jews any better off? No, not at all, for I have already charged that all men, both Jews and Greeks, are under the power of sin. As it is written, none is righteous, no, not one. No one understands, no one seeks for God. All have turned aside, together they have gone wrong. No one does good, not even one. Then Paul goes on to quote a series of passages from the Psalms and one from Isaiah, all to testify to the same reality that sin and injustice has found a home not only among the Greeks, that is to say, the Gentiles in general, but even among the people of the covenant who have the laws of God and should know better. This is why David sounds so disheartened here. Not only the Gentiles do what is unjust, but even his fellow Israelites exploit their brethren, disregarding the law of God. What kind of fool would commit injustices against his neighbor, knowing that there is a God who punishes those who exploit the weak? Probably the kind of fool who doesn't really believe that God will do what he promised to do for the poor. The kind of fool who may declare with his tongue that he believes, and yet his actions are not backing up his words. This would be the kind of fool who says with his lips that there is a God, but in his heart denies him and his law. So who could be today the fool who says in his heart, non est Deus? According to David and Paul, we should look for him in the covenant community of God and the new Israel. And we'll recognize him by the fact that he will say one thing explicitly, or with his lips, but will say something else implicitly through his actions, or, in other words, in his heart. I saw one of these people this morning when I looked into the mirror. This verse is not in the Bible to have something to beat atheists on the head with, never mind that if you use it against the atheists, you just insult some people, pure and simple. This verse is in the Bible, dear Christians, for us, for all the occasions when we behave like there is no God. 